So what we're going to go over this morning is one of my favorite things to teach and, and speak about. And it's essentially, it's our number one lead source, generating inbound calls from your Google profiles. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. All right. So good morning, everyone. Um, super excited to uh, join you guys for Agent Power Huddle this morning. Um, I'm uh, Mike Wiseman here in uh, the state of Maine uh, with EXP Realty. Uh, everybody can hear me okay? Just a quick audio check. I think you can, right? So just make sure everything's coming through clean. Yep. And um, perfect, perfect. Um, so I'm up here in Maine. I'm a three times icon agent with EXP Realty. Um, and the 2023 was um, honored to become the icon of the year, um, which was awarded at the uh, EXP Con this past in, uh, in October in, in Las Vegas. So what we're going to go over this morning is one of my favorite things to, uh, to teach and, and speak about. And it's essentially, it's our number one lead source. And I think I want to make this really practical and something that um, the next half an hour or so um, you can take away and actually know exactly what to put into practice. We're going to talk about uh, generating inbound calls from your Google profiles. Okay. And for us, this is, um, like I said, it's a huge, I'm going to go through some slides here. I'll share a screen in about five seconds and we'll, we'll, you know, go straight through it. And if you have questions along the way, you know, obviously you can, I guess, feel free to ask them. We'll save some time at the end for, for a Q and A and it, there's a lot to cover, but you know, for those of you that, um, are looking for a lead source that will work in any market, every market. And if you're not fully utilizing the Google platform to its highest level, this is going to be really exciting for you guys to, to dive into. And I'm happy to, uh, even after the podcast, answer any questions or support you guys on it. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. So let's see if this works here, right here, right here. Awesome. Okay. All right. So you should have, what do you have now? Do you have the, I don't know if you have the right screen up. Do you have the, um, you see the going big by going local screen? You should. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. All right. So um, this is going to be, and I'm going to go through it quickly. So I apologize for going kind of fast, but we have only about 30 minutes. I want to be stick to that time, honor that time. This often can take easily, a, you know, an hour, two hours, even a day to actually get through. But in a half an hour, I can give you a really good overview and some real practical things um, to really optimize your search. So we're going to dive into three things this morning. The first is we're going to answer this question of why local search, why we need to be um, focusing on it. And all of us that are serious about growing our business need to be looking at it. We're going to talk about our local profiles, building each of these profiles, we'll look at two in particular um, that are really, really the most important ones to, to get nailed down. And then we're going to look at um, the third thing is optimizing these local profiles. This is the kind of the, uh, the $50,000 question everybody wants answered is what do I do to my profiles to actually get phone calls from them. So with that said, let's um let's jump right into this. So you're gonna learn today how to generate new business, going getting found. And this is the key. When someone actually searches for a real estate agent in your town or your area, or even your entire state, uh, we run this now in multiple markets, probably 30 plus, 40 plus different markets, um, even outside of my local of my local market here in Maine for multiple teams. And I'll show you a little more about that. But when someone searches for realtor, uh, realtor or real estate agent near me, you want to be found. And what's really exciting is, you know, for many of you on this call, this may be a completely untapped lead source. And yet we know that there are likely hundreds, if not even thousands of transactions closing every year in your local markets from this very lead source. And is it is literally available to us for the taking. So what we're going to um, really focus on, and I want to cover some background here. We said the why local search and why we need to be paying attention to it is because Google is paying attention to it, right? Google is investing a tremendous amount of energy and resources into optimizing their local search results and the local search experience. We're going to focus on two of those points there, um, search results and search experience. This, and Google, this is a really key point. There's going to be a few things I'll, I'll say this morning that I really want you to, if you're going to write things down or make notes on or really take away, is um, realize this. 
Google is out to become the most trusted source when it involves connecting consumers with local service providers. Okay. And if Google is making that their focus and they are the 500 pound gorilla in the search engine space, we want to pay attention to this. Okay. They're pushing everybody else out. Yelp, you name it, all the other searches, Home Snap or Smart, these companies that used to try to do the similar thing, um, Angie's List, that sort of thing. It's all flowing back into Google. So this is the big message for this morning that if you're not getting found and getting calls from Google, someone else in your market is. I promise you, we can actually, you know, I can actually go out and call the one-on-one and, and show you exactly who was getting those calls, even close to how many calls they're getting. We can actually see that data. So l- let me give you a little bit of background and just show you how, we, how we've come to here and how we've got to this point. So um, most of what I'm gonna show you today is actually, I'm gonna have to credit my son, fellow real estate agent, um, I have six kids, by the way, five are licensed in real estate with me here um, at EXP and doing different roles. Ben has become a marketing expert and he's probably the foremost in the country now on doing exactly what we're going to look at today, among other things, including AI. But over the last four years, my son, Ben, okay, ha- and his team have ap- literally pioneered the optimization of Google local search ecosystem for the real estate industry. Uh, our local team here in particular, and now... Uh, more than 60 others, solo agents teams, even small brokerages around the United States. Um, he's done exactly the same things before. And I can actually make that claim to a degree because four years ago, what we're going to look at today did not exist. So realize things are changing so fast. And of course, they're changing even faster now with AI and accelerating it even further. But four years ago, local search for the real estate sector did not exist. You, they were just rolling it out for plumbers, uh, ben actually learned this from his days of being a locksmith. He was actually a mobile locksmith. And the way they got business was searching for locksmith near me. And he learned that about five years ago when he came to Maine about four years ago. And then they just started in real estate. So everything he learned from that sector, we applied here. So how is this translated to us here? Well, I'm in a relatively small market. I'm in a market with 5,000 agents in my whole MLS. I right? have to almost no transactions. It's a million, just over a million population instead of Maine. So, but in 2022 alone, uh, we closed 43 sides, 43 transactions from this lead sources directly, inbound calls to our local profiles. We have a 10%, now let's just pay attention to this. This is what we call dream leads. A 10% conversion from the first phone call, an average time of the first call to a closing of 95 days, and a 13 times ROI on any money we spent to generate that. Um, these literally are the dream leads. These are uh, gonna be leads that are, comparable, if not much better than even the Zillow or the portal leads, um, particularly because half of them will be listings. That's been our experience. It's about 50-50 listings to buyers. So, and then in 2022, we'll update this number shortly. But as of 2022, we ran these numbers annually. Uh, ben and his team have collectively generated more than 20 different markets um, in 2022, 3,000 leads, 300 closings, and about 3 million in GCI um, for you know all the people that we help, we help uh, do this for. All right, so this is literally what I call a new era of business development and lead generation. And the, the old style, and I, and I wanna say, I'm still a big advocate for picking up the phone and having conversations. That's still what it's all about in real estate. If we don't have conversations, uh, we're out of business. Uh, but yet the outbound, what I call interruption style marketing, like cold prospecting, is absolutely becoming less effective, okay? Unsolicited outreach by a phone, text, right? Ringless voicemail. You name it, it's facing mounting legal challenges. Um, there's obviously a point of the legal challenges around in the real estate sector a- as it is, even without this, but even before with the current issues, this was still going on. Okay? And and I'm someone that's been now licensed for just about five years, and I build my business with the telephone, calling expired listings, you know, thousands of phone calls uh, to take uh, listings, and it's very successful. We're still doing a lot of phone work, but I track the data, and it's absolutely becoming um, a diminishing return. It takes more calls, more conversations, uh, to, you know, to to, uh, to connect with people. Um, this is an example here of just some of the recent, you know, lawsuits uh, related to the TCPA Act, Telephone Consumer Protection Act. Okay, in some states like New York State, cold calling became outlawed, and, it, and it's during COVID, and they haven't brought it back. And uh, for our friends in Canada, you cannot use the phone to recall expireds or FISBOs. Um, you know, all the major firms, KW, EXP, 
Um, KW paid $40 million and settled a cold calling lawsuit. Okay. So there's a lot of pressure to stop it. The phone companies are getting better at blocking unsolicited phone calls or more of our calls are going to spam. So we see the kind of writing on the wall. And this is what I call really, it's, it is a true shift. There's multiple shifts going on right now, right? We have our whole market shift, whole another subject, but there's also a shift in how we'll need to be generating business in the near future. Okay. And it's going to shift to how can, what can we do to make our phones ring? And all the platforms see this to understand it. This is just a, some screenshots here from Yelp and Apple and Bing. And, and of course, Google, we'll talk a lot about today. They all see this and they're all vying for it. They're all now using AI to help accelerate this, okay? But they want to connect consumers and users with service providers in the local market. That's where the money is for them. They realize that, and that's gonna be a, uh, an important part of their business plan. And that's why we need to pay attention to it. Okay, then now let's, this is in another, this is the second really important point I wanna make here, is um, it's really important to understand what Google is looking for when it delivers um, from us to deliver search results, okay? And there's always two questions that Google's trying to answer every time when, when someone makes a search. The first thing is, a am I delivering relevant search results, okay? Am I the one who typed in searching real estate agent near me? Am I getting relevant results? So for real estate agents, that's a relatively easy bar to hit, let's just say. If I, if I type in real estate agent near me, and Google knows where I am based on my IP address, it can deliver the results. But if I just typed in real estate near me or real estate in Maine or real estate in California, Google might not know really what I'm asking for. Is that clear? So they'll, they might show me, am I looking to buy a house, sell a house? Am I researching properties, looking for a mortgage to refinance? It doesn't know. So the first thing is, are we relevant to them? That's a relatively easy bar to hit when it comes to setting up our profiles because we'll set up as real estate agents. This next one though is, is the more challenging one and it's also where the, the one where we can stand out very much above any of the portals, any of the mega um, um, lead generation systems or services out there um, is the positive experience. So Google is actually monitoring now when I act upon a search result, so I do a search, real estate agent near me, I find this guy, Michael Wiseman, real property team in Maine, I click on it. Did I have a good experience by contacting that service provider, by contacting me? And Google is gonna rate that in multiple ways. We're gonna talk about that in the coming slides. So Google is actually watching the experience and monitoring the experience. And uh, that's where we really now can get an edge up on those that put this into play we'll get a huge edge up on it and I'll show you why. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the actual kind of screenshots, literally, um, and I want you to understand, we're gonna talk, always defining our terms, right? If we're gonna talk about these types of products and services, we need to define our terms. There's a lot of confusion that runs, you know, when I speak to agents all the time, my son speaks to agents, there's a lot of confusion of what we're actually talking about. So let's understand that so we all speak the same language, okay? So first off, this is called the Google stack. Someone that's uh, doing SEO or in, in this space here, they call it the Google stack. So I wanna go from the top down and help you understand, explain what each of these sections is because they're, they're related, but they're, not, but they're also different. So first off, um, I always like to point out, and this is really the first thing that shows in every Google search. Okay, I searched for real estate agent in Winslow, Maine, where we happen to have an office. Uh, it's where Ben lives. And it always shows the number of results in the amount of time. So here it shows 4.7 million results in just under half a second. And I always wanna point out that, is that just Google trying to impress us with their computing power? Like what are they actually trying to accomplish by telling us that? Sure, it's an impressive <laughs> um, feat to accomplish, but there's more there. There's a subtle psychological message here that says to me who searched for this, this uh, real estate agent is that, look, there are almost 5 million results Okay, these are the best. These are the best ones that I found of the five million and I did it in half a second to show you how much computing power I have. So it is communicating to us that Google filtered down lots of stuff into just the top few results. So it's, again, that's Google's credibility coming to these results. Next section down, 
this is what we're going to see. We're going to call this Google Local Services. So if you're making notes, that's often abbreviated as GLS, Google Local Services. Okay, that's its own thing. It's not Google PPC or pay-per-click or Google ads. It is a paid platform. However, it's a pay for per phone call. And I'll talk more about that on the next slide. But this top section here is called Google Local Services. Now, this screen, I do have to admit, in the last 10 days, two weeks, has actually changed slightly. If you search now, sometimes setting three across, you might see two stacked. But it still is there. It's the sponsored section, Google Local Services. The next section below that is what we call Google My Business. This is where a lot of the confusion comes from. Google My Business, and I put parentheses Google Maps, that's what it used to be called. They've combined Maps and My Business. So now this, this is abbreviated as GMB. So we have Google Local Services, GLS up top, GMB, Google My Business, on the Maps pack down below. Those are two separate entities within Google. They have two separate setups. When you open one account, the other account is not open and vice versa. It needs to be set up separately and optimized separately. So there's a lot of confusion there. So I just want to import, put, you know, point this out. So we'll talk more about this. We're going to, in the coming uh, set of slides, we're going to look at each section individually. We're going to zoom into the first section first, local services, and talk about exactly what it means to, um, you know, to, uh, to uh, um, how to rank on there and what, what's going on. So let's tip my next slide. All right. So now we've zoomed in. Okay. We've just taken a slice. This is a GLS, Google Local Services. So um, I'm going to point out a few things here that are really important. First off, the little little green check mark, the Google screened check mark. Okay. That now appears as one big green check mark above all the listings, but it serves the same purpose. That's Google lending credibility. Remember, they started that process by showing us how many search results there were and narrowing it down for us. Well, the check mark further enhances our credibility. It's Google screened. Google's done something. We don't know what it is yet, but they've done something to let us know they've done some background check on these folks. There's three spots on desktop, two on mobile. That has been changing in the last couple of weeks. It's now been two on desktop and only two on mobile, which means we want to rank in the top two. Now, these will rotate through. It won't always be the same top three. Sometimes it'll be, it'll flip around. Every time you search, it might be different each time, as a matter of fact. And I'll talk about why in a little bit. If you're noticing here, at this particular search I did, the time of day, whatnot, I did it. Um, my team has two of the three spots. Okay. That's happening less and less often now as more and more people are involved with it. Okay. Now, the, uh, the last thing I'm going to point out on this section is this is the paid part of what we're talking about today, but this is a pay per call. So it does not cost money to appear here. I'll appear here at the top three, totally free, no cost to appear. I'm only gonna pay if someone clicks the profile and actually clicks call and dials the number. Okay, and Google will charge me for that call. Generally about $40 per call. But I want you to think back about what I said on the earlier slide, a 10% conversion, uh, less than 100 days till a closing, half buyer, half seller. So I will tell you that we have about a 12 to 13 times return, meaning it takes me 10 calls, 40 times 10, 400 to have one closing. So that's 400 bucks for about a seven, eight, seven or $8,000 GCI all day long, right? And how many calls can I get for that? So that's where the numbers start to work in our favor here. All right, now let's talk about, break it down one more time. So now we're opening up one listing, okay? We're still looking at the, we're not talking about the ranking factors yet, that's coming up next. We're now we're breaking it down. We're jump, we're dot, we're zooming in. This is one particular listing. It's always a very boring photo they want. This one's actually a little bit extra on the boring side, honestly. Um, but they want a passport style photo. Okay, I'm not going to talk about everything, the requirements, but they are careful. You cannot put a full shot here or a full body shot. It needs to be basically from head and shoulders up, kind of a passport kind of photo. But here's you know, some important things I want to call out to you. First of all, Google knows if I've looked at this listing before or I viewed this listing or even if I've called them. So here it says I called them on March 11th. It knows that I called this company. Keep that in mind for a couple of slides coming, okay? The Google screened, it tells me what that means. It's gonna mean different things in different states. Here it means I passed the license check and background check. Some states are more have more um, uh, involved background checks. Some states are relatively easy. Florida is one of the more involved. Maine is one of the easier ones. 
Okay. Now this is an important part here. The third point, a, a Google generated local phone number. That number you see there, 207-888-1155 is not my phone number. I've never seen it before. In fact, every time I refresh my screen, uh, it'll change that phone number fairly frequently, but always using my, my local um, area code. Why are they doing that? Remember from my previous screen, it's all about experience. Yes, Google is going to forward the call to my number, but along the way, they're going to record the call. They're going to track how many times I, how quickly I answer the phone. They're going to, uh, was it a good experience? And they'll be able to follow that person right through to the end that they submit a review when I, when I request the review at the close of the transaction. That's based on the experience. All right. Now, this is how we secure a top three spot. This is what everybody wants to know. So again, I'm going to go through it fairly quickly because I want to make sure we're going to honor our time. We have about 10 minutes left to go here. And I have about five more minutes of slide, so we're doing okay. But here's how you secure a top three spot. Okay, first off, you got to open the account for Google Local Services and get verified. It's a fairly simple process. Okay, um, you work it, work it straight through. Don't pay anybody to do it for you. Okay, you can do it yourself. If you've tried to do it and you've gotten stuck, it happens a lot. Uh, reach out to myself or my son Ben, and we can help you with it. Um, five reviews minimum. Okay, does not have to be from a Google Local Services previous client. It can be from anybody that wants to come in and give you a good review. Caution here is don't use close friends and family. Google knows who you're emailing, who you're texting with most often, and if they suspect it's kind of just a like a like a fake review, if you will, from a friend or family member, they won't publish it. Okay, your physical location, your area you're served, super important. So you can. You can put in where you are physically and also the areas that you serve. So we serve the entire state. I'll come up in the whole state. If I'm actually in a town, it'll actually say that I'm located in that town. So that's an important part of the ranking. Uh, your stated hours of operation. So if you put um, 24 hours, which might sound great, well, be careful because look at the next ranking factor, your phone answer rate. If you don't pick up the phone at least 80% of the time or better on the first or second ring, Google will ding you in points and you will not rank. They will drop you out of here. Why? Because it's experience. They put up three people and you try to call all three and no one answers the phone. That's considered a not good experience. Google will put up someone with fewer reviews, okay? Fewer reviews, but answers their phone and is giving a better level of service. That's why we can compete, okay? Um, previous search activity. Remember from my previous slide, if I bounce back here quick, that first line there, you called or you viewed. Google knows if you've been to somebody before. And if, if so, they're actually more likely to show them to you again. Why is that? Just think about it. If you've already shown an affinity for going to someone's website, and it's also the website, going to the website, going to their profile, it means you have a, an, an affinity for them. You're more likely to click the call button and Google gets their 40 bucks. Remember, Google wants you to hopefully click one of these folks and get $40. They're gonna put the most relevant to you. It's a personalized relevancy. Okay. It's, it's, it's wild. It's getting better with AI, but this is the way it works. Then finally, your bidding strategy and budget. Um, not enough time to go into that on details, but in general, you've got to bid up. You've got to set your budget as maximum as you can. You only will be charged for the calls that you get, which means I'm always the high bid in my market. I bid two, 3,000 a week in my markets. Um, I've never been able to spend that on even a month in any of the markets because there's not that many phone calls but it doesn't affect the price of your call. So you've got to get set your budgets high and get as many calls as you can, make sure you answer them and uh, and you know get everything else set up set up, you know, quite right. So anyway, and I'm going quick because I'm running to cutting to the to the uh, bottom of the hour here. So, all right, next slide. Now we're going into the other section called Google Maps. Okay, Google Maps, this is the completely organic section. Google My Business is what it's called right now. It used to be called Maps. This is a separate setup. Okay, you don't set it up in the same um, in, in the same control panel. Separate setup, separate account with Google. This is free. It's organic. You're not. You cannot pay to get on this map. So there's going to be three spots on the map of both desktop and mobile. Results are organic and not paid. This is a very valuable position to be on. And again, it'll kind of rotate through. How do you rank on the maps section? Well. Um, same kind of factors, but here location is probably the most important. If you're not on the map or very close to it, you will not display. And you know, in a very rare cases where there's someone searches for real estate agent in a certain city or town, and there's no agents in that town, 
Google will, will, will pull from the nearest towns and still give you a result, effectively, you know, blowing up the map, right? Making it a wider search area. But in general, you must be on the map that Google is you, is looking for, okay? The relevance to the search, you just search for real estate agent near me, that would come up. Um, and now your updates. You wanna be updating once or twice per week on your Google My Business profile with real estate and locally relevant content. Again, this is a whole course unto itself, but needed to say, you need to have um, a, a profile that is active and when people go to, they interact, okay? It's not for people to find you. People don't scroll Google My Business like a social media platform, but when they see your listing and they interact with it, okay? Google likes that. Oh, this listing, when I show it and someone clicks it, they read their stuff, they read your posts. Google likes that, they're more likely to show you next time. And then you're linking. You wanna link to your website, from your website. Other people linking to you, link back to your lender link to this, that sort of thing. Google tracks that. And then of course your reviews. And here it's the more the better, same kind of parameters. Make sure you don't use close friends or family. Use obviously past clients, use your partners, use your lenders, use your your um, inspection partners, whoever will give you a good, honest review for the integrity um, and, the, and the quality of business and service that, that you deliver. And that's, um, reviews do matter here. Uh, reviews here, by the way, will reflect on your local services profile, but not the other way around. We don't know why, that's just the way it is. The reviews here will show up on your local services, but not the other way around. Okay, I think that that's the, oh, this last slide here, I'm gonna go super quick, we're not even gonna cover it, but organic is everything below that level, okay? Below local services, below maps. Um, no time to go into it, it's all the same factors plus dozens more. This is where your website's actually getting found now, not just your Google profiles. And then um, the last slide I have is here. So this is actually, we, this is um, just a, we, we went over so much here. Um, this QR code um, Ben put together, it's just a, it's a free course. There's only that maybe a sign up. There's nothing being sold there at all. He, he will show you how to set up each profile. It's he takes you um, on an actual live setup with one person on local services and a live setup on some of my business. And we do this weekly also, um, you know, on, on Facebook and uh, in Workplace. So if you're, um, if you wanna go through a setup, you can do it live, but this will take you through basically two examples to get you set up. So you can actually now get your share of the local business and get your share of um, what's coming from Google. So that's what I got for slides. So if, if we, I'm not sure where we are for time, Autumn, but if there's some Q and A, happy to do it. If we have to wrap it up, here we are. So, what's the? Uh, We've now anybody? had a few minutes. So, if anyone yeah. has any questions, okay. So, anybody has any questions? Um, feel free. We have a bunch of people on. I'm happy to answer them. Um, open your mics, or um, uh, I see. I can look at the chat. Put them in the chat. Oh, Danny, you're very welcome. So, um, Steve, Michael, I have a question. This is Steve. Yeah. Hey. Um, so, I used to be Google screened, and it, it appears to. Have disappear do you know have you seen that happen before where you're where you're google screened and then it doesn't show up anymore mm -hmm. yeah um so is it did, did anything change like with your address or your did your eno insurance expire that's happened to us a couple times if your eno insurance um ran out if your license switched or renewed okay um, I do recall when they asked for the updated insurance so I don't I think that that's correct but I guess mm. That's probably the best way. What yeah. is the best way to? Is there like a dashboard where you can see? There is. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're talking about if you're talking about the screening. Well, it's, it's, they both have verifications, GLS and Google My Business. Right. Oh, I'm not sure which one you're you got. You, you no longer are showing screened on. Do you know? Um, I'm not showing screened on. Well. If you type in like real estate agent Northwest Seattle, we come up. We always show up uh, top position uh, okay. on on the Google business page. But I see a bunch of brokers on the left side mm. uh, that have that check mark next to them that say Google screen. But like I said, ours does not. So I'm just trying yeah. to figure out where to go to get that fixed. So you can call them. I mean, there is a number if you can find the my and um, if you have trouble tracking it down. Um, reach out to my, my son, Ben is the one you actually want to go to. And everything I showed you today is really, I'm, I'm the front of it and the team owner, right? I mean, my son, Ben, 
if you have a connect with him, he can he can he can get it squared away. I'm sure he knows exactly okay. what the issue is. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, if you're at EXPs in workplace, whatever. If not, you can just just hit hit us up on Facebook. You can find us, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else have any uh, questions or um, need any help getting onto to the Google profiles? Where do you start? Um, you start by 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 setting up your profiles. So, really, you you start literally by getting your. Um, I would start with Google My Business profile first because that's totally free. There's no bidding strategy, and you, you just go to. You actually want to make sure you're going directly to Google. So, if you're able to get those QR codes from the screen share, this Ben shows you exactly how to do it. Right, totally free to set up. Doesn't cost the thing. So thank you. And and it just steps you through. Once you have that, you want to do the local services. You can. There gets a little more involved as far as getting the calls. Yeah. Cool. Okay, Alex. Yes, the recording. You can certainly can watch and then reach out. If anybody needs anything? So, anybody else that I can um, answer for or related to the. Okay, cool. So, you know, Autumn, it's up to you. I can, whatever, it, it's, if someone any wants any more information, anything, or, or any more, I'm going to go over anything else in particular. Yeah, no, um, just I, it, just um, how they can reach out to you just through Facebook or Workplace, and and then yep. we can end. <laughs> yep, sure. I mean, okay, so perfect. So I'm, I'm, um, anybody that happens to be with EXP is on Workplace, e I'm easy to find. Just type in my name, Weissman. You'll see five of us in there. But um, you'll find it's me or Ben, Michael or Ben, that we want to um, to connect with our workplace. And then on Facebook also, if you see it, we're pretty easy to find. Michael Wiseman, Real Property Team, EXP Realty. Um, feel free to, to ping me there, reach out to me. That's the best way to uh, catch up. And i um, happy to help anybody. And if you didn't, you know, that QR code will also take you to what to set up. If you need anybody wants it, just a quick, quick setup and you know, have questions answered, so. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. Sure. My pleasure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.